Joining us now to talk about the Russian retaliation as well as the situation in Syria is Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California. He's the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman Schiff, thanks very much. You bet. There is a read of this ceasefire now in Syria, uh, and as well as Syrian advances on the ground, that Russia has won, in effect. It got what it's wanted. It wanted. Assad's still in power. Uh, is that accurate? I think it's gotten a lot of what it wants, yes, uh, unfortunately. And I think what's so telling here is, uh, with the ceasefire, that Russia always had the capability of pressuring the regime, which is so dependent on the Russians, uh, to uh, bring about a ceasefire, but it never wanted to use that pressure until it had changed the facts on the battlefield, until it had uh, helped the regime take back Aleppo. Now that it's accomplished those military objectives, uh, it is now um, a newfound interest in a ceasefire, uh, and we're seeing that uh, manifest uh, in uh, a quelling of the guns, at least temporarily. Is that a bad thing? For the U.S., for its influence in the region, also for the for the fight against ISIS on the ground. Well, you know, as the ambassador said, I think the ceasefire is a good thing because it will it'll save Syrian lives, and that's very positive. Uh, but I think we have lost uh, some of our stature in the Middle East. I think we've lost some of our credibility there, uh, and I think the Russians have gained. So this has been a win for the Russians. Uh, they may have bit off something that, in the long term, is a problem for them because the insurgency there isn't going to go away. Uh, and I think they're going to have attrition on their hands, as, as the regime will also. Uh, so they've taken on a lot, but I think it has uh, burnished their image, their ability to project their power. On to the Russian hacking here. Uh, if there was an issue that, that could unite the, the divided parties on the Hill, it appears to be Russian hacking, right? Because, because you've been a very strong voice on this, but you're hearing from the McCains and the Grahams of the world, from Paul Ryan, McConnell, and others, uh, that, that they believe Russia did the hacking and there should be tough penalties. In fact, they say there should be even tougher penalties than we see. But the division is, is not between you on the Hill. It's between everybody on the Hill, it seems, and President-elect Donald Trump. How is that resolved when he takes office? Well, I think it's going to be resolved either by an face by President-elect uh, Trump. Uh, when he gets this intelligence briefing, maybe that's the way he makes his pivot. Uh, or you might have an about face uh, by the Republican leadership in Congress that's not willing to send him a sanctions bill, notwithstanding the support of the McCains and, and others. Uh, right now, that Republican resistance, for example, is torpedoing any effort of a, a, a comprehensive either select committee or joint committee investigation of the, of the hacking, notwithstanding a lot of bipartisan support for that. Uh, so, what, you know, one of those things is going to have to give or there will be a real confrontation. What do you do if Republicans don't hold, hold their fire, hold, but rather hold their ground on this issue? What do Democrats do without majorities in either, in either the Senate or the House? Well, you know, on the, on the Russian hacking, I think we push for the most thorough and objective investigation as we can. And we have the ability uh, to conduct part of that ourselves. And, and I think there's a bipartisan willingness, uh, at least in the intelligence committees, to go forward with that. On the broader issue of, of, of going after Russia, punishing Russia, deterring Russia, uh, I think we ought to do everything we can as Democrats to work with Republicans uh, and put together the strongest sanctions bill possible and send it to the president. Uh, he may or may not sign it, uh, but nonetheless, I think the steps the president took uh, in these sanctions and the diplomatic expulsions are an important first step, but I don't think they'll be enough ultimately to deter the Russians. You've been pushing for these kinds of steps for some time. Did President Obama wait too long? I think he did. Uh, I think this would have been more powerful had it come earlier, had it been in combination with our allies. That would be very tough to put together in the last couple of weeks of your office. Uh, but I think these are significant steps nonetheless. I don't think this is uh, superficial, and I'm hoping that what the administration is doing covertly is even more significant than what it's doing overtly. Uh, and certainly any covert action that might be taken, and you could see, for example, a bunch of alternatives that might involve exposing corruption in the Kremlin, exposing Putin's own uh, of money around the world. Uh, these things are not easy to uh, undo, uh, and they would have a lasting impact. What evidence, though, do you have? Do you believe they will work? Will they deter? Will they stop Putin from doing this again? Uh, the steps we've taken so far, no. Uh, if we do more, I think it can be a, a very credible deterrent. The thing the Russians care about the most is their economy. That's the real threat to the regime if their economy continues to go south. So building on the sanctions over Ukraine, that would be the most powerful thing that we could do. Uh, but, you know, right now they're hoping to get everything they want from Donald Trump, a week in NATO, the, uh, doing away with the sanctions. A, a free reign in their sphere of influence just by mere flattery of the president-elect. So why rock that boat? Yeah, uh, We'll have to watch it closely 